Well, this is part leading. This is Mr. Yang and uh, Kerwin. Um, we'll see some aiming and a lot of uh, good thinking moves. So we'll uh, let's get started on this one. Okay. All pretty straightforward. Now, do we pinch? Stem. Everyone says we pinch, and how do we make that choice? Bottom is more interesting at the very least, and bigger, right? Okay. And then uh, which of the pinches? A little bit of a trick question. All six are fun. Just different. Yeah, all six are we see all the time. Okay, he chooses this one, which is funny because that's what a lot of people said right off was, hey, hey, <laughs> everyone got it right. It was funny. Okay. Black has a lot of ways to settle here. Uh, we won't go into details. Well, a little bit. We're not going to get much of a wall here as we run out to do a pinch off of. So running out doesn't make a lot of sense. So he does a contact to settle. Just settle locally. Thanks, Mr. Seki. Black can now go away because he has me on. All makes sense so far? Okay. So to go away, we're talking about A or B seem to be the next big ones. One, me I. Oh, what is the me I? Uh, C and D. Black will live with either one of those. Um, so A and B are the next big moves. And that would make, have the game proceed normally and casually. Uh, a lot of strong players like to create things and not follow a normal course, but create their own game. And that's what uh, Kerwin does here. He continues the Jiseki, which is not necessary, and it's not particularly suited, but that's beside the point. He's here to create his own game. So we go this way. This is Black's right when he wants it. He says, I'm going to do this and then pinch. Well, it's fine. But it's not that much of a wall. There's weaknesses in it. Uh, white's pretty far away, hard to attack. Uh, that bottom area of the board is not that big. But it's a fine move. It just doesn't, it's not what the board was saying. He was using, he was making his own mind up what he wanted to do. Okay, so it's fine. Onward. Slight pinches first. That's the proverb. Profit before running. That's the running move, right? So he could play that outright. He could run. Once I get on the right button, we'll run. And black settle. And white safe. I'll get right back to that proverb again. So white ran, and black got the profit. But we also have time, we have a moment to take profit before we run. And that's uh, actually a very important move to have a game. If you have a moment before you run, take some profit, then move. And we never see this profit because then black can get aggressive. We always see this profit because it weakens the stone that's trying to hurt us. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's good. Ah, Black does some more creating his own game. He does a, a nice move. That's a little bit risky. He's not all that strong yet. 
go. This is the first move of the game that's a bit... Well, there's something to aim at here. But nice move. What are the ways fight can get to safety? J7, out, and LU, under. Right. Out and under. So, White's move is really quite interesting. It makes the Mii stronger. Check that out. I think that's a really cool move. Surround black, make your wall higher, give White a better Mii than he had. I really like that move. Very, uh, very cool move. White goes to surround, White takes the other Mii. Okay, so what does white have to aim at? It's probably obvious, but I'll let you guys tell me anyway. What does white have to aim at? The L5 stones. There's a couple nice moves in there. There's the weakness that uh, B, C, D, this whole thing is thin, right? Now, white's not a super strong thing to go attacking like crazy, but clearly it's something to aim at. Here. Well, one thing at a time. Let's not rush into this. Continue playing in the top. But we're still, uh, the attack is middle game. We still have opening moves to play. And that's one of Mr. Yang's quotes that I like so much. When I, when I, I find myself getting confused, I always get back to his quotes. Uh, when I ask him which of these moves, he says, in the opening, play opening moves. Ever since he said that, I know how should I do that move or that move. One's an opening move, do that one first. R10 seems like a move that he's played after he's read out. Uh, yeah. So, just to uh, repeat what Chrono said, this area here, this area is basically where white can do well. So this move negates anything that white, if white builds thickness there, that's already negated. So it's preempting that problem. So if white plays here, black is really tempted to find some strength which would give white the profit on the right. So, here, white plays a great move. What does white do? So, no key, or 14, not 3 3. G17. Okay, Tanuki means black gets this incentive. That's too big. For a free move, that's too big. Settling locally gives black tremendous profit. So, Whoever said it is right. RJ said it, yeah. Settle the group this way. Very smart. Okay. Black comes in. 3-3. Three, three. Let's check out the options here. Black could play at A. Yeah. It's not horribly small, but it's just seems a bit not that great. Black could continue trying to grow like around B or C. Yeah, but there's no reason to play that. There's no activity there. So it's a bit um, one purpose. D, okay. But that would give away a corner. White takes the whole corner. 
possible, or E, take the corner away from white. These are all big. I say the thing to take and keep in mind is the F group. That whole F area is weak. So how about this move? Support that area. Give white the corner if he wants. Look at that black area developing. Beautiful. And that weak area has been supported. Doesn't R3 hurt? Yes, it does hurt. Exactly. I think this is a mistaken direction. And so, white has a few options. A and B are both just heavy. If White likes his outside thickness, he plays B. If he doesn't like the outside thickness, he plays A. Let's just look at A. People don't know A. It's a very uh, valuable, at the right time, it's a great descent. Double hunting. Black takes the outside. White gets the corner. That's a nice corner. But the weak area is now supported with a strong position. Black doesn't get too much points. Uh, the, the points are equitable, but the position is black. So white goes to the thickness because black is weak here. So we play out a very calm Giuseppe. There's a small difference. This is the most basic Giuseppe. But notice, it gives black Aji in the area he likes Aji. So white makes a very small change. So now black can get tippy ones. Well, that one doesn't help so much. Those little differences are very helpful in the Uh P15. Let's see. Can't even net. I assume it can. Yeah, just a net. Black supports the R10 stone, right? Because white just got thick there. Black could play here if he was particularly concerned about the thickness, but the thickness is a long way away. So he plays this way to support it. Pretty necessary to support that stone, or else White's invasion is very severe. Uh, this is the game. Okay. There's two opening moves left. What are they? C, 13, or 12, they're both the opening moves, yes. So the left, what else? Okay, let's do it this way. Let's do some obvious stuff first. The A area is decided. You don't know exactly how much of that's going to be black, but it's black. Now, this is very obvious, of course. The B area decided. C area decided. D area is decided. The E area is half and half. I mean, it's too small to consider a opening. What about the F area? Undecided. Now whether we're going to call this an opening move or the first middle game move, hard to say. It is an invasion, but it's... Seeing as how white's thick there, 
Anyway, those are the next two moves that come to mind. So I plays the first one. Castling Black's corner. Black secures the corner area, which is potentially a little slow. But it's... White has moves like uh, this. Mm, if black guitar is this way, then perhaps white can uh, live in the corner. If black guitar is this way, see there's Aji here, annoying Aji. So black cleans up the Aji, and white does the right side. This is the most, in my mind, this is the most common way to enter that this particular spot. There's a few things white can go for here. An invasion, outside thickness. But remember, we're aiming at that bottom weak black area. You could do something like this. Right? The problem is, it gives black extra stuff. It's this outside thickness is too much. Anyway, so white's going for the outside thickness. White got the thickness. Now there's two things white can do. Build a nice area in the top slash center. Oh, white shape is extremely efficient here. Well, a very famous sequence because it's so efficient. Or, so that would be the territory way to use this thickness, build area. But remember, we're going after that thin area. So it comes this way. Black's got to take out away because it's getting bigger and bigger. So he has to play there. And white prepares for fight. It's a beautiful sequence. White takes the cutting stone, and white comes in. So we can see from early on how white is aimed at this weakness. It's, it's a lot of patience, and the thing that's different from last week's aim, it's not like it's a really big area or an important area. It's just something that's hanging out to muscle. It's not that big, it's just a little bigger than anything else. He could have gone for the points on top, but this one's more active, more interesting. Oh, he still stuns me too, Prophet. Um, he can play at a professional mind on level playing the most basic moves imaginable. Now, he doesn't have that competitive edge of these present-day hot shots, so he, a lot of times when he plays them, he'll lose by a point, point and a half, you know. Yeah. Okay. So this whole aiming thing is very smart. So, the problem here, there's really a large center area that black has to be careful of. So this is his way of taking care of it. Notice white's move, start to cut through, and threatening those two E6 stones. Black's got to fix the stones, and white comes on through. It's very cool. And it takes a nice little area. Black has developed a new weak group. So he defends. Okay. Square for white. This one's going to be a little bit interesting. 
Yeah, a little bigger than you expected. It's not huge, but pleasant. Z11 seems very natural. A, extend from the top. Again, very understandable. Not that that needs defense, but yeah. Probe, uh-huh. These are all reasonable thoughts. Anyone else? Push on E. Fifteen. Yeah. So black scoop in the center isn't great. What if white starts pressing, right? And aiming at that. Well, it's just one goal that black can clearly settle if you want. So that that press is a little. That's not a good aim. Hey, hon. I just started my lecture. I'll be about 40 minutes. And then I'll do a ton of questions. <laughs> okay. So these are all reasonable. Let me remove, let me remove the marks. So, let's start with, is there any unfinished business? This is something we always have to be aware of. There's something left undone that we have to go finish before we start new things. Which leads me to another Mr. Yang quote. He says, I go do something big, I finish it, then I go do something else big. I love that quote. Okay. So someone says, C13, lonely. Okay. <laughs> That's shy daughter and Shy Horse. Both of them are beautiful. Okay, so someone points out that A can be considered unfinished business. Anything else? The top? No. Those B stones have been stable and continue to be stable. G17. No, those stones are fine. B2. A double gote. B is double gote. Both groups are alive, so it's just a little thing. G8. Um, lots of room. It's thick. Pretty hard to attack. And white doesn't, you know, white's top group isn't great for attacking. The A stone's not great for attacking. Now, let's change that a little bit. Let's say that area was strong. Okay, we made that strong. Let's make the top strong. Okay. And let's make sure that there's no particular way home. Okay. Now I might think about attacking it. My groups are steady. There's not too many ways home. I may start immediately trying to get aggressive. Maybe. But that's a lot of preparation. Okay. So, there's a piece of unfinished business. The A thing so far is the closest thing to unfinished. But it has a home nearby. It's not like an urgent stone. What he, what White just did, is not finished. Ah! All our points are gone. Ah! Ah! Terrible. So, this is the unfinished business. The thing we just created, not done. The way in which he finishes it is extraordinary. I mean, it's simple, but notice this move has a certain level of efficiency. But, if it looks like this, that move becomes more efficient. See what I'm saying? The thicker black is, the more efficient P6 becomes. So, white makes the threat, makes the threat, now black's rock solid, then you come back and fix. 
And now we can just oh, the wrong button. Now we just capture the stone. So he fixes it, but in a very nice way. Now let's Gote. He's not afraid of Gote. Everyone's afraid of Gote. Don't be afraid of Gote. It's not a problem. The only time you're worried about playing is when there's a critical point on the board. Oh, we have to go get this thing done. And find a way to take Sente. Lose something on purpose. Take less on purpose so you can go so you can get Sente. Okay. Oh. Notice how much Black respects his weak position. He doesn't even play this way. Uh, he's not strong enough to get too aggressive here. He plays very calmly, respecting his weakness. Now that he's strong, then he gets aggressive. And White says, that's your right. Great, that's yours, no problem. That was yours. So White took something, gave something. And it's still White Center. Okay. Notice something here. See these black stones? See how they look kind of heavy? That white stone is looks very useful. This is another thing to aim at. This move. White says, are you going to let me towards that white stone? Black says, no, I'm not. You cannot use that stone. If black got more aggressive, well, this could get dangerous. And there's things going on here. Anyway, so black plays it strong. White has another probe. It takes the corner. White settled very nicely on top. Black's been reduced a number of times. So instead, black attempts to go after the two stones on top. And that's the last part of the interesting game, so we'll go to that. White lives. Black goes after the group hard. He's the thick one now. But there's still the Aji around F12, the thickness of O13, Aji stones all around. So let's just play simply here. And notice, this kills the top. So black has to come back in Gote and take that stone. Black could care less about that. The so black could do that in Gote, just not so big. And white develops this center area. And we see the game develop from there. So that's as far as I wanted to, those are, that's the end of the things I wanted to show you in this game. As always, I encourage you to download the game, watch the flow again of what we've seen, and then go to the game and check it out. Okay, our next half hour, let's, uh, I'll open up a board and we'll decide if we want to do uh, take turns or create our own. See you there.